Hey everyone, Cole here, Cole's Commentary. Kansas State defeats NC State 28 to 19 to take home the first ever championship at the Pop-Tarts Bowl. They got the Pop-Tarts Bowl trophy, they ate the edible mascot, and the Wildcats will return from Orlando, Florida victorious over the 19th ranked NC State Wolfpack, led by freshman phenom quarterback and MVP Avery Johnson. Connor Riley as the interim offensive coordinator put up 21 points in the first half. Struggled a little bit in the third quarter, but when the offense needed to score seven points to ice the game away, they did just that. 15 plays over seven minutes of game time. It was a special drive. And, and for me, the story of the game not only is the freshman quarterback, I voted him as MVP. He won MVP. We do the nice little gritty right there by the kid. I think that's everybody's reaction to how K-State found a way to win this game. I, I, I think when you look at it, it's, it's a testament to not only the freshman that is Avery Johnson, but the seniors up front. And Coach Kleiman alluded to it in the press conference, how much he trusts those veteran offensive linemen. Cooper Beebe said there was no way he wasn't playing this game. Everything that Connor Riley has done for him and those other seniors up front, they had to play this game. And it was apparent. Uh, fourth and one, hand off the ball to DJ Giddens, who also phenomenal tonight. Over 100 yards on 25 carries. DJ, at the end of the first half, was averaging over eight yards a carry. NC State found a way to slow him down a little bit, but when it mattered most, K-State went behind those veteran offensive linemen. And I'll touch on this being a springboard into next season here momentarily, but you have to live in the moment. We talked about that on Cole's commentary, living in the moment. These Kansas State players were doing that. This game meant a lot to NC State. Uh, this would only have been their second 10-win season in the history of the program had they found a way to win tonight, but K-State made sure that didn't happen. Um, the defense was very, very good. They made a lot of adjustments. Brennan Armstrong, six-year quarterback, gritty quarterback, benched halfway throughout, uh, benched midway throughout the season, rather. He was really good on the ground. He struggled through the air a little bit, but K-State found a way to limit him in the second half. And to me, one of the more underrated plays of this game happened when VJ Payne just absolutely obliterated the six-year quarterback on a two-point conversion. NC State was gonna punt, but they didn't. It was a fake punt. Um, the up back took it 60 yards for a touchdown. NC State was going in for the tie, and VJ Payne said, not today. That flipped the momentum in this game. And while it didn't lead to any points for K-State immediately, it set the tone that, nope, this ends here. And that defense didn't allow any more points from that point forward. Um, they allowed one offensive touchdown the entire game. Very special by this Kansas State defense. Guys like Chidi Obiizar, guys like Colby McAllister, Jack Fabris, uh, Bryson Gobbs got in the game. There's so many different players who made contributions and that's exactly what Chris Kleiman said. He wanted to send the seniors off right, but he also wanted to take a look into 2024. Another example of this is Seth Porter, a guy who saw more snaps tonight on offense than he probably has combined throughout this entire season. Had a big time third down catch. He also had a punt return for a touchdown that was called back. Looked like a pretty bad call if you ask me, but nonetheless, set the tone. Seth Porter cares so much about this program. He deserves a shout out. He deserved that playing time. And while we didn't see a guy like Trey Spivey, again, Seth Porter setting the tone for this program, setting the standard that Chris Kleiman and this program have come to expect. Um, we have to end and talk about Avery Johnson. I, I've talked about this before and, and I haven't shared this publicly, but there have been times when I've watched Avery Johnson prepare when you watch him play in games and he's special and he's different. And uh, Mitch Fortner from K-Man asked Dave Doran in the post game, have you ever seen a quarterback like Avery as a true freshman? And honestly, the answer that Doran gave was, you know, kind of standoffish. He said, yeah, I've seen quarterbacks like him. Then he proceeded to name Lamar Jackson and Ben Young. I think Avery Johnson has that potential. I, I've talked about how good I think this kid can be. Um, I know our own Tim Fitzgerald's very high on him, as is everybody on our staff. I'm not gonna sit here and say that he is the next Caleb Williams, that he is the next Patrick Mahomes. But folks, he has the tendencies that the great ones have. You saw that tonight. He put the team on his back at the end of that game and said, I don't care that we haven't scored. We're gonna score here. And while a lot of that is attributed to the offensive line, a lot of that is attributed to the quarterback. Jace Brown, true freshman. Keegan Johnson, sophomore. DJ Giddens, sophomore. Avery Johnson, true freshman. It's gonna be special these next few years in Manhattan. This game was a showcase for that. You look at that defense, every single starter that we know of, except for Khalid Duke, plans to return in Kansas State next season. Up front, they returned three contributors on the offensive line. Coach Kleiman all confirmed that Taylor Potier would be back. 
I'm not going to sit here and say that this is a team that is rebuilding for a Big 12 championship game, but it's not out of the picture. Tonight shows you, does this team have flaws and some areas they have to fix? Probably at the wide receiver position to start, for sure. But whenever you have number two as your quarterback, you're going to have a chance at every single game you play. And so while the season and the storybook closes on 2023, a new one opens for 2024, and there's a lot of sunshine in the forecast.